Hi, I'm Todd Orchide, CEO of GTL Real Estate. This is the fourth in our series of videos going through our standard lease agreement and discussing it in plain language. In today's video, we're going over page four of your lease, which talks about tenant responsibilities. First, the lease talks about repairs and maintenance. This section says that you have to quickly report to us any sort of dangerous condition or need for maintenance at the property. You can do this by calling our main office number or going to our website to submit an electronic form. After receiving a service request, the lease says that we will get any legitimate repair issue resolved in a reasonable period of time. Keep in mind that reasonable does not mean immediate. It can sometimes take a few days to get a vendor out to fix something, but we will get someone out as quickly as we can. This section also says that you are required to keep the property clean, sanitary, and free of trash. It's important to note that if you don't do this, the lease says we have to send a vendor out to do it, and then we have to bill you within 30 days. So please uh, be sure to keep your property in a clean and sanitary condition. The lease also clarifies that any minor upkeep that costs less than $75 is a tenant responsibility. It's important to understand that this is not really talking about repairs, but rather just general upkeep, such as burned out light bulbs or replacing furnace filters and that sort of thing. Finally, the lease notes in this section that if you schedule a service call for an issue for something that you broke or didn't keep up, or if you no-show an appointment, you will be responsible for the vendor's service call fee. Next, the lease says you must keep the lawn mowed, edged, free of weeds, shrubs trimmed, and grass clippings picked up on a regular basis, as well as keeping trash and debris picked up. If you're in a condo or other special situation where the landlord or neighborhood association takes care of these things, this section of the lease will address that. Next, the lease says that you're responsible for any clogged drains, pipes, or septic systems. The exception to this would be if there is a systemic problem, such as tree roots growing into the sewage line. Otherwise, you must take care of normal blockages. It's very important if you live in a house with a septic system that you don't put anything down the drains except for toilet tissue. Next, the lease mentions pest control. Normal insect control is your responsibility, but pest control for termites and rodents would be the landlord's responsibility. That said, if rodents are caused because you haven't been keeping the property in a sanitary condition, that would be your responsibility, so be sure to keep that in mind. Next, the lease mentions that smoke detectors and carbon monoxide detectors are installed where required by law. However, it is your responsibility to test these on a regular basis and replace the batteries when needed. Our inspectors will check these once a year and bill you for replacing the batteries if you don't, and it's much more expensive for them to replace them than for you to do it, so be sure to keep these batteries up to date. Next, the lease talks about freezing pipes. Whenever the temperature is expected to reach freezing, you must make sure to keep the faucets dripping and the furnace on. If there are any leaks or busted pipes, you need to call our main office number and submit a service request immediately. Consider this an emergency. Next, the lease talks about mold and mildew. Please keep in mind that there is a difference. Mildew is quite common, especially in older bathrooms without good ventilation. You must be sure to keep doors open as much as possible, turn on fans, and wipe clean these spaces to prevent the growth of mildew. Mold is more serious than mildew, and thankfully it's pretty rare. When a tenant reports mold, we almost always find that it's actually just mildew. That said, if you believe there actually is mold in the home, please report it. If we think there's reason to believe that mold is in the house, we will have it tested. However, the lease does say that we are allowed to use our best judgment on this. So please keep in mind that the landlord has no legal obligation to have a formal mold test done if we don't believe that there is mold present. In most cases, what we find is just mildew, and one of our vendors is able to easily determine that mold does not exist and remediation is not necessary. Next, the lease reminds you that you must provide us with any access codes to security systems, entrance gates, garage door openers, or anything else that locks on the property so that we can gain access when needed in case of emergency or inspection. Next, the lease talks about carpet cleaning. You are required to get your carpet professionally cleaned every year and right before you move out. Please note that it must be professionally cleaned. 
Renting a carpet cleaner from a Home Depot and doing it yourself does not count. When you move out, you'll have to give our inspector a copy of the receipt showing that a professional carpet cleaning company did the cleaning. So be sure to hold on to this receipt. You'll have to pay for a carpet cleaning out of your security deposit if you don't have the receipt, so this is important to keep in mind. Next, the lease talks about HVAC filters. As part of your resident benefits package in the lease, we send you a new HVAC filter about every three months. If you don't get any of these deliveries, please let us know. When you get the filter, remember that it's still your responsibility to install it in the system. Usually you can find the filter access either in an attic, a hallway closet, the garage, or the crawl space. Failure to replace this filter can result in you being charged additional fees and damages, so remembering to do this is very important. We have the filters delivered for you so that it's easy to remember, but it's still on you to actually do the replacement, so don't forget this. Next, the lease talks about appliance damage. This section just says that any appliances you bring into the house that cause any damage will be your responsibility. So be sure your appliances are not leaking and are properly installed. Next, the lease talks about uh, neighborhood amenities. This refers to things like neighborhood pools, clubhouses, tennis courts, and exercise rooms. The landlord is paying for neighborhood fees for these amenities, so if you would like to use them, the lease says that you'll have to pay these fees to reimburse the landlord. Otherwise, if you don't want to use these amenities, then you won't have to pay HOA or COA dues generally, unless there's some sort of special stipulation later in the lease that requires it. Next, the lease talks about the leash rule. If you have any pets, please remember that you're required to keep the pet on a leash anytime it's outside and not in a fully fenced in area. This isn't just our rule, it's usually a city or county law also. It's also just the safest thing for your pet. Next, the lease talks about fires on the property. If the property has a fireplace, fire pit, wood burning stove, or any other area for burning wood, please note that you would be responsible for any damage caused if a fire got out of control. The lease also prohibits fires in any places that are not specifically designed for it. In other words, don't invite the neighbors over for a big bonfire in the middle of the backyard. It's just not safe. Finally, the lease mentions that swimming pools, hot tubs, playground equipment, trampolines, and similar equipment are not allowed on the property at all. This isn't because we don't want you and your kids to have any fun, it's just because the landlord's insurance company usually doesn't allow it. Sometimes the insurance companies have inspectors drive around and take photos of these things, so it's important to stay in compliance. That's it for page four of your lease. Next week, we'll talk about some other rules found on page five of your lease. If you have any questions about this video or anything else, please don't hesitate to email us at support at gtlrealestate.com.